Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a story from NCERT's supplementary reader for class 10. The title of the book is Footprints Without Feet. I am going to take chapter 9 and the title of the story is Bholi. The story that we are going to discuss today has been written by Khwaja Ahmed Abbas. K.A. Abbas work spans many genres, films, scripts, journalistic pieces, essays and short stories like these and it is the common man who is at the center of his story world. This is a writer who consciously portrays the tales of ordinary people who accomplish laudable deeds simply by virtue of their undaunted spirit and the sheer will to survive. His portrayal of social inequalities is very sensitive and at the same time he conveys hope and especially supports women's voices. His last story Mother and Child based on the Bhopal gas tragedy was published after his death in the Illustrated Weekly of India in June 1987. K. Abbas wrote about 73 books in Urdu, English and Hindi comprising both fiction and non-fiction. He also has seven short story collections to his credit. His entire composition of work be it films or literature reflect his deep seated optimism. Please mark the words optimism and commitment to social transformation. The characters in his stories do not accept humiliation lying down but assert their identity and claim their rights in emphatic words. The best example of such an assertion is the story the dumb cow. The protagonist in this story is a young girl named Bhuli. Have you been able to connect the two, the dumb cow and Bhuli? Probably the name, the title of the story has been changed over here. Bhuli means naive or innocent in Hindi. Do you think it represents the protagonist's nature as well? If the title is Bhuli, the person is very naive. Do you think it represents the story? Can a story have a meek and simple central character? Is it possible? Let's find out by reading the lesson together. Right? I will just read an excerpt from here and then move on to the rest of the story. Pay attention to the dialogues that I am going to read for you so that you know we set the tone. Her father thinks of her as a burden wants to get rid of her by marrying her to a greedy old and lame man. Bholi tries to resist but is not given any space to express her views. She later realizes that her marriage is a commercial transaction and refuses to marry the old man. The exchange of words between the father and daughter indicate the author's sympathies with the daughter. Let's look at the dialogues though it comes at the end of the story but I want to share this with you beforehand so that you understand what are we going to read about. Pitaji, take back your money. I am not going to marry this man. These are the words of Bholi. So her father says, Bholi are you crazy? Ramlal shouted, you want to disgrace your family? Have you some regard for our Izzat, for the sake of your Izzat, I was willing to marry this lame old man, but I will not have such a greedy and contemptible coward as my husband. I want, I want, I want. And she reiterated her determination as if she was in the grip of hysteria. So these, this is the power that is what K. Abbas wants to depict. Let's know more about K. Abbas and then we'll come back to the story once again. K. Abbas was also a prominent director 
and screenwriter in the Hindi film industry. Though he began his career as a film critic and editor for the film section of the Bombay Chronicle, thereafter he started work as a scriptwriter in films like Nicha Naga, Dr. Kotunis ki Amar Kahani and Dharti ke Lal, all of which got him noticed by the best filmmakers of his time. So that is the power of his work and we are going to read a story written by this person who has written a lot and he has written for different genres. Bholi too is one such compassionate and inspiring story. Shall we begin with the story now? Now you know the background. It is very important to know the background because then we will go beyond this story. I will give you a list of suggested reading. You can read those stories, those novels later on because supplementary readers are meant for extensive reading, right? So that you read on your own and enjoy reading and comprehend that is important, but at the same time you should be able to interpret them globally. Right? So, here with this story, when I am going to discuss the story with you, keep in mind the global concerns and then later we will discuss about it. Shall I begin with the story now? You can also open your books on page 54. The story goes like that. Her name was Sulekha. Children, please underline the word Sulekha over here and mark it that it comes here and then we do not get to see this name anywhere in the story and only in the end there is a reference to this name. What happens? Let us see. Her name was Sulekha, but since her childhood everyone had been calling her Bholi, the simple term. She was the fourth daughter of Nambardar. Ramlal, when she was 10 months old, she had fallen off the cot on her head and perhaps it had damaged some part of her brain. That was why she remained a backward child and came to be known as Bholi, the simpleton. Whose fault is this? Parents are supposed to look after their children. I mean 10 month old child falling down it is not the child's fault. Well, she was the fourth daughter, she was the seventh child, so therefore she was the neglected one. Let us continue. At birth, the child was very fair and pretty, but when she was two years old, she had an attack of smallpox. Of course, now smallpox has been eradicated. She had that attack. Only the eyes were saved, but the entire body was permanently disfigured by deep black pockmarks. Little Sulekha, now second time we are getting this name Sulekha. Little Sulekha could not speak till she was 5. Generally children start speaking at the age of 2. You know how do children learn to speak? When they get that environment, they listen and then they speak. That means nobody was talking to her, nobody was playing with her. There has to be meaningful conversation between the child and the family members. So this clearly shows that such interactions were not taking place with this child. So she was slow to learn the language and when at last she learned to speak, she stammered. The other children often made fun of her and mimicked her as a result she talked very little. So therefore you know her exposure was not there, she was underconfident and she spoke very little I, and that is not good for any child. We become confident speakers only when we listen to meaningful content and also reading also plays an important role over here. But when nobody was talking to her, she did not pick up the language or the nuances. 
her family. Ramlal had seven children, three sons and four daughters, and the youngest of them was Bhuli. It was a prosperous farmer's household. See, Ramlal was Nambardar. Nambardar means that he had a good position in the village, and there was plenty to eat and drink. All the children, except Bhuli, were healthy and strong. As we have already been told that Bhuli was a neglected child, whether she has eaten or not was not anybody's concern. The sons had been sent to the city to study in schools and later in colleges. So they were getting the privilege and the girls were not getting. So note down this point. This is a point of discussion. We will discuss at the end of the story. Of the daughters, Radha, the eldest had already been married. The second one, Mangala's marriage had been settled. And when that was done, Ramlal would think of the third, Champa. They were very good looking healthy girls and it was not difficult to find bridegrooms for them. But Ramlal was worried about Bholi. She had neither good looks nor intelligence. Do you think this is the right approach of a parent towards his child? Neither good looks nor intelligence. Please underline this. This is another point for discussion. We will have a discussion on this. Let us continue. From her very childhood, Bholi was neglected at home. As we all know, she was a neglected child. Bholi was 7 years old when Mangla was married. The same year, a primary school for girls was opened in their village. This is a very good news, isn't it? That the Sildar Sahib had come to perform its opening ceremony. He said to Ramlar, as a revenue official, you are the representative of the government in the village and so you must set an example to the villagers. You must send your daughters to school. This is told to Ramlal by the Tasildar. It never struck him. How unfortunate. With this, we have come to the end of first part of the story. And here we will take a little pause because I want to discuss a few questions with you. So are you ready? Why is Bholi's father worried about Bholi? Why? We all know Bholi was not like uh, other children. She fell off a cot as a child due to which her brain was slightly damaged. She learned to speak very late and used to stammer. Her face and whole body was covered with pockmarks. Thus her father was worried about her marriage prospects. That is it. But you know, if we add this segment to the question, what Ramlal could have done? Let us go beyond the text. He could have sent her to school. They could have looked after her, right? All parents should do that. Next question is, Bholi is sent to school for unusual reasons. Of course, we have discussed the unusual reasons now. What are those? Compare your reasons for coming to school with that of Bholi. Bholi's reason was Ramlal was a government official and the Tehsildar had asked Ramlal to send his daughters to the new school in his village. Bholi was sent to school just to satisfy the Tehsildar and not for education. As Ramlal's wife felt that sending girls to school affected their marriage prospects adversely. So that was the mindset at that time. She did not want to send any of her daughters to school. However, Bholi with her pockmarked face and dull brain would be difficult to get married anyway. So Bholi's parents decided to send her to school to satisfy the Tehsildar. What a reason. Now the question also has compare your reason for coming to school with that of Bholi's. Of course your reasons are entirely different. I am giving you 30 seconds to write down your reasons. Please note down the points and then I will move on to the next part of the story. 
have you written down your reasons yes you have come to school to have knowledge because you want to achieve something in life you want to learn so many things in life you want to be good not only in studies but also in sports arts and other things and you learn from your friends you learn from your teachers it provides you with different perspectives and when we get new perspectives every day we look at things from a different angle right so your reasons are different from that of bullies and everybody should go to school with a positive reason right let's continue with the story the next day ramlal caught her by hand and said i will take you to school should children be taken to school like that certainly not that's not the way okay bholi was frightened and reluctant to go to school she didn't know what a school was like naturally she had never been out she remembered how a few days ago their old cow lakshmi had been turned out of the house and sold she had that memory in mind so she was really scared so she started saying no no she shouted in terror and pulled her and away from her father's grip what's the matter with you you fool so they are not even you know speaking in a normal way with her they are calling her fool all of that that's not the way one speaks to children he says that you know i am only taking you to school and then he told his wife to make bholi wear some decent clothes or else what will the teacher and other school girls think of us when they see her they were not uh, bothered about bholi's cleanliness or hygiene but they were bothered about what others would say that's also not a good way of looking at life as we know new clothes had never been made for bholi the old dresses of her sisters were passed on to her no one cared to mend or wash her clothes but that day she was lucky to receive a clean dress which had shrunk after many washings and no longer fitted champa she was even bathed and oil was rubbed into her dry and matted hair matted hair means entangled hair okay uh, only then did she begin to believe that she was being taken to a place better than her home underline these words page 56 you know when she was given a bath she was given a clean dress and you know her hair were oiled and combed she felt that she was probably going to a better place than her home generally it's the other way round it happens that after school hours we want to rush back home because that's the place that gives us comfort but here it shows the other way round let's continue when they reached the school the children were already in their classrooms and bholi was really surprised to see many rooms and verandas ramlal handed over his daughter to the headmistress bholi did not know what exactly a school was like and what happened there but she was glad to find so many girls almost of her own age present over there she hoped that one of these girls might become her friend the lady teacher who was in the class was saying something to the girls but bholi could, could not understand nothing she looked at the pictures on the wall the colors fascinated her the horse was brown just like the horse on which the tehsildar had come to visit their village the goat was black like the goat of their neighbor the parrot was green like the parrot she had seen in the mango orchard and the cow was just like their lakshmi underline these words these sentences rather what are we referring to you see learning becomes meaningful when we connect it to the real world so here the author is trying to tell that you know she is already connecting 
whatever is given in the classroom, whatever is given in the form of pictures in the classroom to the real world and that is the real learning. See students, this scene is specially well written because as an educationist, I too agree that it is only when a child finds her or his life reflected in books and examples does learning become enjoyable. I am sure you would agree to whatever you learn and if you find those references around your life, it becomes meaningful and it becomes easy to understand. This is known as experiential and contextual learning. This makes lessons more enjoyable and easier to understand and relate to. Perhaps that is why Bholi also adjusts well in school despite her initial apprehensions because she was getting you know some kind of a comfort from those pictures which were very relatable. Let us continue with the story now and suddenly Bholi noticed that the teacher was standing by her side smiling at her and asked her to tell her name. Bholi tried to tell Bho Bho, she could not tell, she stammered. Then she began to cry and tears flowed from her eyes in a helpless flood. She was so nervous. She kept her head down as she sat in her corner, not daring to look up at the girls who she knew were still laughing at her. When the school bell rang, all the girls scurried out of the classroom. Scurried means great hurry. It is time to go home. So they all went out. But Bholi dared not leave her corner because she did not know what to do. She was left there and she thought she had to sit there. Her head still lowered. She kept on sobbing. Bholi, the teacher's voice was so soft and soothing. In all her life, she had never been called like that. Maybe she heard all harsh voices. This soothing voice touched her heart. Her teacher said, get up. It was not a command, but a friendly suggestion. Bholi got up. Now tell me your name. It is the tone that comforted her. Right? She had such a soothing voice. She would not laugh at her. So Bholi tried to tell her name. She stammered and then finally she said that her name is Bholi. Right? And her teacher encouraged her. And at last she was able to say it and felt relieved as if it was a great achievement. Well done. The teacher patted her affectionately and also said, put the fear out of your heart and you will be able to speak like everyone else in the class. Moli looked up as if to ask, really? Can that happen? Yes, it will be very easy. You just come to school every day. Will you come to school? Bholi said yes. And Bholi was astonished that she had been able to say it without stammering. The teacher gave her a book full of nice pictures. And the pictures were in color. Dog, cat, goat, horse, parrot, tiger and a cow just like Lash Lakshmi. Once again, Bholi was relating the pictures with her real life. The learning is beginning, right? And with every picture was a word in black letters. Of course, she can't read. She will be able to read one fine day. So her teacher told her that in one month, you will be able to read this book. Then I will give you a bigger book and then a still bigger one. That's a great achievement. In meantime, you will be more learned than anyone else in the village. How beautiful! And actually these words come true. Towards the end of the story, you will find it yourself. And then her teacher further says, then no one will ever be able to laugh at you. People will listen to you with respect and you will be able to speak without the slightest stammer. Understand? Now go home and come back early tomorrow. Bholi felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village temple were ringing and the trees in front of the schoolhouse had blossomed 
into big red flowers. Her heart was throbbing with a new hope and a new life. Underline this paragraph. So education is giving her a new hope and a new life. With this we have come to the end of this session. I want you to read the lesson on your own. There aren't many difficult words in it and if there are some difficult words they have been glossed in the text or you can refer to the dictionary and supplementary reader is meant to be read on your own. You should read and enjoy. Happy reading. Thank you.